Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Rampant Design Tools, and I'm back again with another tutorial. And in this lesson, we're heading into Avid Media Composer for a very common situation that I run into, and I'm sure that a lot of you run into on almost a daily basis. And that's where you're given an element from an outside company, and the direction you're given by the producer or director is to take it and make it better. The only problem is you really have no control over what's been created, so you need to get in and be creative yourself as to how you're gonna take that element and take it to the next level. And you always hear me talk about rampant design tools elements being the butter on the bread or the jam on the toast or the icing on the cake. And in this situation, you can see in front of you, we've got a rampant design tools element that I created, but what I did was I gave it a bit of a shake to show you a very common situation where you need to get in and think outside the box as to how you're gonna add these elements to this particular element to take it to the next level. So what we're gonna do in this lesson, even though you might be thinking, well, Cav, that looks really complicated. I, I know I can't do that in Media Composer. I should probably send that to a motion graphics designer to do this. You don't need to do any of that. You can use tools available to you inside of Avid Media Composer, as well as using these awesome rampant design tools elements. All right, now a couple things I wanna talk about before we get started with the tutorial. The first is that if you're new to rampant design tools and you're really not sure if these elements are right for you, what I encourage you to do is to head on over to 4kfree.com. Sign up for the rampant design tools newsletter and you're gonna get access to a ton, over 100 rampant design tools elements that you'll be able to download absolutely free for you to work with in your projects, which is really going to give you a feel for how great these elements are. And again, it doesn't cost you a penny. That's 4kfree.com. Head on over now and sign up. You'll get the newsletter and you'll get emails for great deals on rampant design tools products. Now, the other thing that I want to remind you of is that if you don't know this already, you're definitely going to want to check out the Rampant Previewer app that you can download on the Apple App Store. This preview app is going to let you get in and get a preview of all of these great elements right on your iOS device without having to go through each element manually on your computer. This fantastic tool is absolutely free and it's under 10 megabytes. You'll have this app downloaded in no time and you'll be able to check out any one of the Rampant Design Tools elements anywhere that Wi-Fi is available. All right, and now that we got our housekeeping out of the way, let's Command or Alt and Tab into Avid Media Composer. And you'll see that inside of Media Composer, we already have our Rampant Design Tools element with a little bit of shake shake in there. And what we're gonna do is take that, I'm gonna drop it into a new timeline, and we're gonna use a couple third-party tools again to create our new composite. And I'm gonna start out by working with Mocha Pro. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that I am using the plugin version of Mocha Pro, but to be honest, you could use the standalone version of Mocha Pro as well. It's gonna work exactly the same, the technique. And let's take Mocha Pro, the plugin, I'm just gonna drag it and drop it down onto my shot. And what we're gonna be tracking in here is we're gonna put the lens flares you saw in the introduction over top of the M, over top of the E, and over top of the L. Okay, so let's head into our effects mode here, shift and wise my shortcut, and I'm going to launch the Mocha Pro UI. Now, keep in mind that if you are working in half resolution here, there we go, and you try to launch Mocha Pro, you are gonna get a warning that's telling you that you are not in full resolution and the tracking quality can be reduced if you're not careful. Now, you could suppress the warning, but to be honest, I always like to be told that I've forgotten to do something. So I'm just gonna put our timeline in full resolution. I'm gonna launch Mocha Pro again. And I wanna show you, and this is one of my favorite things to talk about when talking about Mocha Pro, is just how intuitive it is. So this could be quite an annoying element if you had to get in and actually position those rampant design tools, flare essential flares, basically frame by frame. But what we're gonna do in here is we're gonna get in and I'm gonna track the MP. Now I've already gone in and I've tracked the E and the S and the L and the S. So you don't need to watch me go through that whole process. I'm gonna show you how the process works with the first one and I'm just doing that to speed up the whole overall tutorial. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back and I'm going to just grab my X-Spline tool and I'm just gonna create an X-Spline around the M and the P here, just like such, okay? And let's just straighten out our boundaries there, perfect. And I'm gonna track about 75% of the pixels. I'm gonna track translation, scale, rotation, not shear though. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start this track going. 
Now at some point, what's probably gonna happen is the track is gonna get a little bit messed up. We'll just watch it, and as soon as it does, I will hit stop. And we're actually doing pretty good. Oh, there we go. It just completely fell off the rails right there. And this is where a lot of people get frustrated and they think, oh, now I'm gonna have to go in and make all these adjustments. You actually don't have to do any of that. Mocha is pretty intuitive. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come back here to the frame before we fall out of whack right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna track everything frame by frame. So instead of hitting the track forward button, I'm gonna hit the track to next frame button. Now this frame is fine. This frame is fine. There, everything goes out of whack. Now, people think, okay, I'm just going to start making adjustments. Don't do anything yet. All I'm going to do is track back one frame because keep in mind, Mocha is still checking out all of the pixels, se actually 75% of the pixels that fall inside of the range that we have selected. So when I track back one frame, let's go back a couple more here. You'll see it's a little bit more out of whack. There we go. Let's go forward again. Let's go forward one more. And then we're going to go back and forward and you'll see that Mocha picks up the track again on its own. I didn't actually have to do anything, which is fantastic. Now all I have to do is simply keep that track going. We'll see if it falls off the rails again here before we get to the end. And we seem to be okay. So let's call up our surface. I'm just gonna place the surface basically sort of upper left, lower left, and roughly around the P here, just as sort of as close as I can get it here. Let's actually make sure we actually grab the surface here. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Let's call up the grid and let's just take a look at what's happening. I'm just going to zoom back a little bit here. Okay, you can see my grid's not perfectly straight, but that's fine. And you'll see this is looking pretty good. It's pretty darn locked in there. And again, we did that one quick fix where everything sort of fell off the rails. We were back up and running in no time. Okay, so what would I do at this point? Well, at this point, what I would do is I'd actually come down and I would export the tracking data to a Boris Effects BCC center point track information. I would save this out to the desktop and then we would go on with the next step. Now, like I said, I've already gone in and I've actually tracked the MP, I've tracked the ES and I've tracked the LS. So we have our three tracks exported and basically what they look like, and I'm just going to quit out of Mocha Pro here. Let me just come back up here. I'll quit out of Mocha. I'm not going to save anything. I'm going to hide to the desktop. If I come into my flares folder, this is basically what the information looks like. Because this is a center point track, you'll see that this information is basically getting in and defining the center point of the track. There's the X pixels and the Y pixels. Okay. And you can see that I've categorized it by basically MP, LS, and DE. So let's now get in and let's apply this tracking information to our footage. Okay, and we're back. Now, what we can do is that since I am done with my tracking, I'm just gonna remove that effect. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new video layer, Command or Control and Y on the keyboard. Let's take our Rampant Design Tools Shaky Shot and we're gonna put it on Video Layer 2. And I've got my flares from the Sci-Fi Flares Pack. Now, I love these and I talked about this when I was doing the basically the getting started with the Flare Essentials Pack, which is the reason that I love these flares is because they can accentuate basically little parts of the text. You know, for example, what we're doing now, which is, you know, a little bit at the top of the M, a little bit at the top of the E, a little bit at the top of the L. You could really get in and add a whole bunch of these flares. You could have them flickering and doing all kinds of really cool stuff very quickly and easily. So how are we going to apply this flare to our element. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our flare and I'm going to drop it in in the background. Now, what's important to keep in mind as well is that this flare is a 4K flare, but what I've done is I've brought it into Media Composer by linking to it and I transcoded it in HD to basically flatten it to 1920 by 1080 because to be honest, I'm going to be taking this flare and shrinking it down smaller than it is right now. Okay, so let me monitor our main shake layer here. What we're going to do is we're going to head into our effects palette again. I'm going to come to my BCC effects and I'm going to come down to BCC's match move. I'm going to grab the match move effect and I'm going to drag it and drop it down onto our footage. Now you'll notice immediately a little window appears that says foreground placeholder, which is fine because we need to tell the match move effect what is going to be the foreground and that's going to be our rampant design tools flare. So let's do that first. I'm just going to scroll down a little bit here inside the effects editor. Here we go to the match move section. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the foreground layer being the first layer below. Now, as soon as I do that, the flare will appear, which is good. 
But what I want to do now is take it and lock it on to the first part of our track, which is that letter M. So what we're going to do is come back up to the tracker data import export dropdown and we're going to load our tracking data. Now I'm going to come back to the desktop where I have the folder. I'm going to come into MC flares and since we're going to be attaching this to the M at the top in the rampant word, I'm going to select that track information and I'm going to say open and you'll notice the flare immediately jump to the top of the window. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come all the way down to the bottom. I'm just going to adjust the opacity of this just so I could see what's going on with it. Now I'm also going to zoom in a little bit here and I'm going to press Command and Option, Control and Alt for all my Windows friends just so that I can pan the window so I can see exactly what's going on. Now you'll see that the track is dead on. It's just that the flare is not you know, dead on in the center of the screen, which is fine because I can make those adjustments right here. Now the first thing I want to do is make this flare a little bit smaller. So let's come up here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the flare about 60%. Okay, perfect. What we're also going to do is just adjust its Y position just a little bit here, just so that it sits at the top of the M. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust the opacity to bring it right back up because inside the effect, I actually have access to blend or transfer modes that you can find right here. I'm going to switch the apply mode from normal to additive and take a look at what I have now. Now before I zoom back, before I sort of give the big reveal, I want to make sure that I do not show motion paths. Let's zoom back and there's our element. Now, I'm not going to render this out just yet, but take a look. That element is locked to that rampant word at the top. Okay, so now the big question is, since I can only apply one element inside of the match move effect, how am I going to apply the flares to the E and to the L? We'll check it out. What I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to take the match move effect and I'm going to drag it out to my bin. Okay, just like this. Perfect. Okay, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to take both these two layers and I'm going to collapse them down into one. I'm then going to take that layer and put it back up on V2. I'm going to take the next flare and I'm going to put it down on V1. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to grab that match move effect and hold Option or Alt and I'm going to drag it down into the Rampant Design Tools Shake layer and there is the flare now up at the top. Now the only catch is because I'm matching what we had done with the previous element, we're still tracking the wrong layer. So let's come and let's load some tracking data. Again, we're going to head back to the desktop. We're going to head to our flares folder and we're going to be tracking the E in this track here. So we want the DE track. I'm going to say open and there we go. Now it's actually at the bottom of this element, which is fine. Again, we're going to zoom in. That actually looks pretty dead on. Now what we just need to do is to turn off that motion path. And that's looking pretty good again. Let's zoom back. Let's step out of effects mode. And that's pretty darn locked in. Now again, what we could do if we wanted to, that's very cool, is we could come down to the opacity and we could get in and start adding keyframes to have that lens flare flicker a little bit, which would then again add a little bit more realism, another layer of realism to what we're doing. But let's now get in, let's add that last flare. And again, the technique is exactly the same. We're going to collapse this layer. We're going to place it up on V2. I'm going to grab that last flare. We're going to take it. We're going to drop it down onto V1. Again, same technique. Take the match move effect, Option or Alt, drag it on. Remember, it's going to add it up at the top, which we don't want. So we're just going to step back into the effect. We're going to load the tracking information. Let's come back to the desktop, into that folder. Let's choose our LS track. I'm going to say Open. You'll see it's already locked it almost dead on. I'm going to turn those motion paths off. Now, the only thing I might want to do with this one is I might just want to bring it up. Actually, you know what? To be honest, I think I'm perfectly fine with that. So we now have our flares set to go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a quick render. And to give you an idea, this is not sped up. So this is basically the match move effect taking that tracking information from the desktop we're rendering the three layers, I think. We have the, the effect on there three times, and it's also referencing all of these flares, all basically live, and it rendered that in, what, 15 seconds? And you'll now see that we have our Rampant Design Tools element taken to the next level, and let me tell you something. A little bit of camera shake is not going to stop us from getting in and taking this element to the next level by locking these flares dead on 
and you see that this technique is something that you'll be able to do inside of your Avid Media Composer editing station. All right, now don't forget, if you want some great free 4K elements, head on over and check them out at 4kfree.com. And to check out the entire Rampant Design Tools product line, you can head on over and check them out at rampantdesigntools.com. Yeah.